Artifacts are quite possibly the most important part of building a character in Genshin. A full artifact set gives huge benefits that define how you play a character. Each set grants unique perks and opens the door to completely new playstyles or massively enhance what a character does best. There are dozens of these things, and almost every one of them is a great option on at least a handful of characters. Emphasis on the almost. Among all the fantastic artifact options, there's this weird bunch, the 3 and 4 star sets. 4 star artifacts are strange. The grant lower stats can't be leveled as high as their 5 star counterparts, which already puts them at a severe disadvantage. But on top of that, the effects they give just... suck. This may be a byproduct of the fact that no endurance have been added since the release of the game, when it was very different. But honestly, I doubt some of these were even decent back then. But, there are some diamonds in the rough here. Some sets here are worth using, either because they have a strange niche, provide a solid side grade to a 5 star artifact, or just... fun. In this video, I'm going to weed out the best of this collection of misfits and see what artifacts are worth building, and which ones should just be kept as fodder. Without further ado, let's get into the ranking of 4 and 3 star artifacts in Genshin Impact. Despite the title saying 4 stars, I'm also going to be including the 3 3 star sets in here. I didn't put that in the name of the video because it made it drag a bit, and also because they're all right here at the bottom, so we won't be spending much time on them. Kicking things off is the Adventurer. Oh boy. The three star sets have a few traits shared between them. They all flat buff one weird stat, Two Piece. It grants a really bizarre source of healing at four. Two Piece Adventure isn't the worst among these, as 1000 HP is better than 100 defense any day of the week. But that four piece, man. When the equipped character opens a chest, they'll regenerate 30% of their max HP. I kinda like the idea here. Chests are rewards for tough fights, so you get some of your health back after finishing one up. Alright, so uh, ignoring the fact that it's completely useless in Spiral Abyss, this also means it's the only truly limited source of healing. There are a finite amount of chests in Tibet. Eventually, you'll run out of new ones to open. And what then? Well, they are stuck with an artifact set that grants HP you can find from a barely leveled flower. The word useless is thrown around a lot these days, but the adventurer earns a special place at the bottom of this list for being the only artifact set in the game to eventually become literally Useless. And while not truly useless, the lucky dog is barely a step up from last place. This is a similar set with a similar idea to Adventurer. 100 defense at 2 piece, and you're regaining 300 HP for every more you pick up. More is dropped by every enemy in the game, and found in chests, so it's got the same health reward idea as Adventurer. The difference is, you know, one of these resources is replenishable. Anyways, the set still sucks. I appreciate the idea of this one, but there's little to no reason to actually run the set. The following two are artifacts similar enough to group together, and oddly enough, they're both four stars. The Tiny Miracle and Defender's Will sets are a pair that both set out to do the same thing, reduce damage taken, and they accomplish it in similar ways, with a situational 30% elemental res that triggers in different scenarios. In addition to an innate 20% from the two-piece, Tiny Miracle will grant 30% res to an element that the wearer takes damage from for 10 seconds, making it adapt to the current enemy to try to give you the upper hand. Defender's Will, on the other hand, grants a base 20% defense from the two-piece, and will grant 30% elemental res for each unique element to the party, trying for a fight fire with fire style. Miracle is clearly the weaker of the two. Not only does it grant less res overall, it does nothing for physical damage, and requires you to get hit to trigger. But both sets share a similar, more glaring problem. If you want to reduce elemental damage taken, just, like, bring a shield? There's no shortage of good ones, they reduce all damage, and they don't take your valuable artifact slot. Decent concepts are artifacts, but they really just don't have any solid place in the game. But what might have a place is the final 3 star set, the Traveling Doctor. Compared to its partners, the Doctor is a colossal step up in quality, and genuinely might have some real use. The Traveling Doctor is one of the most unique artifact sets in the game. At two pieces, it grants 20% extra incoming healing, a very rare stat to see. At its full power, the wearer will regain 20% of their max HP when using their elemental burst. There is potential for this set to be great. With Fontaine's new ways to mess around with healing, having a way to get a bunch of extra health on demand can open the door to some interesting synergy. Characters who drain HP, like Ridesy and especially Nouvellet, could get some of that back from using their burst. Or with Bonds of Life framed by forgeable weapons, it'd be a quick and easy way to clear that. It's like a weird alternative to the Prototype Amber, letting you get healing from a burst on characters that really shouldn't have that. There's actual potential here! Unfortunately, the Traveling Doctor is a 3 star artifact, so its max stats are pitifully bad. If there's any sound on this list I want to be available at 5 stars, 
it's this. The three star artifacts are such a miserable bunch overall, so it's a shame to see a spark of something great drowned in an ocean of mediocrity. We aren't done with weird ideas yet though. We now have what's technically four different sets I'm going to count as one, the prayers of whatever group. These artifacts are unique in that they are the only one piece sets in the game. They take up the hat slot and make the wheeler be affected by one specified element for less time. These sets are just so... weird. The idea of gaining a strange bonus from an unused artifact slot is a solid one, but unfortunately they find themselves greatly outclassed in that department. Typically, when you have four good artifacts for a set, the last one's some other thing from a different set with a helpful bonus, usually a damage or healing buff. While it would be really nice to get one of these artifacts with a useful subset, not only is it astronomically unlikely, but they grant lower stats overall for a pretty meaningless upside. I would really like to see the devs toy with the idea more in the future. One Piece sets to grant mediocre, but still noticeable buffs. At 5 stars, I can see something like this being a pretty solid choice, but as they stand, the prayer sets are rarely worth sacrificing the hat slot for. Braveheart represents a turning point in the list, where you get to the artifacts that could, theoretically, be a decent option on a character. Realistically, they probably aren't, but we can pretend. It's not really an interesting set though. Extra attack percent and bonus damage to foes above half health. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Really situational and unreliable, but you know what? It does something worthwhile, it isn't limited by 3 star sets, and it can be okay on most every character. Extremely boring, but mostly harmless. Some of these things really feel like they're meant to be paired with the 3 star weapons. Traveling Doctor and Otherworldly Story, Instructor and Magic Guide, and the most obvious example, Fair Shadow and Resolution of Sojourner. In addition to an attack percent boost, the resolution will buff charge attack crit rate by a respectable 30%. Yeah, you remember the missing crit stat I was complaining about in the 3-star video? Well, here it is. The funny thing is, it applies to all weapons, though greatswords are the obvious best pick. There's potential for really wacky Yonfei builds with this thing, but claimers are still probably going to get more mileage from it. Though that still isn't a lot of mileage. While it's not terrible, Resolution's another set that's overshot by another one further up, Berserker in this case. It does have its own niche to fill, but as a whole for this sort of playstyle, Berserker, or any 5-star set, is going to accomplish what it does much better. We aren't quite done with charge attacks though, because next is the Martial Artist set. This one will boost normal and charge attack damage by a flat 15%, and an additional 25% after the wielder uses their skill. If that sounds familiar, that's because this isn't the only set in the game to do this. I think this set may have been the prototype for Shimindawa's Reminiscence, a set with a name I definitely mispronounced. That one will grant a whopping 50% extra damage on normal attacks after using a skill, in exchange for 15 energy. This puts the Martial Artist in a weird state where it feels like a light version of the Reminiscence. It grants similar buffs, but without the energy sapping, so works as a weird, less committal version of it. Martial Artist isn't terrible, but it's a bit too general and ends up feeling very safe as a result. If you want to make use of the nice boost to normal attacks, just go it all the way and use Reminiscence. You remember one whole artifact ago when I talked about the upcoming king of combat sets, the Berserker? Well, we really didn't have to wait long to get to it, huh? Now, Berserker is a set that doesn't care about specifics. It has a very clear role and fills it pretty damn well. It grants a bunch of crit rate, and then a bunch more when below 70% health. 70% HP is a pretty mean threshold, as it forces you to bring a weak healer, if you bring one at all, and excludes Bennett specifically. But if you play your cards right, it's not hard to maintain. The main strength of the Berserker is its almost non-existent competition. There are surprisingly few artifacts that grant any amount of crit. No other set gives crit in a 2-piece, and every 4-piece has some limitations where it applies, and a much stricter limitation than Berserker. Plus, 36% crit rate is a lot, and that's without accounting for the artifact's individual stats. There is one problem with Berserker. While it does give a lot of crit very easily, that's... all it does. The fact of the matter is that newer artifact sets don't stack a ton of crit because they don't need to. Bonuses from sets like Golden Troop are much stronger than a bunch of extra crit rate on a 4-star artifact. Plus, they still manage to pack a bunch of extra crit from their superior individual stats. But I still do have a lot of respect for Berserker. It's good at what it sets out to do, and to this day, it is still the best at its job, uncontested. On the flip side, Scholar is a set designed solely for support, and is really good at its job, with a big asterisk there. This one's just like... I don't know man, it's a unique one, that's for sure. At 2 piece, it creates a nice bonus to ER, and with the whole thing, wherever the user picks up an elemental particle, it will restore 3 energy to members of the party, but only if they use a bow or a tome. Huh. So the 4-piece effect of this could actually be pretty nice on a battery character. Since their whole job is gathering energy for the DPS characters to use their bursts, this does nothing but help them out. If they use a ranged weapon. The weird limitation of this set is really harsh, there's no denying it. 
But, if you can work with it and properly build a team around it, the effect is far from negligible. The energy trade is super good. Getting up to 9 energy for collecting one particle can be unbelievably helpful. And there are some real standout characters that can use it to boost your party's ER through the roof. Scholar may only work on select teams, but the difference it makes on those teams is strong enough to put surprisingly high on the ranking. Now, I've talked about sets with the potential to be pretty good before, but none of them even come close to a gambler could theoretically unlock. A fellow gambler is a set that will boost the wearer's skill damage by 20%, and when they defeat an enemy, it will reset the cooldown of their skill once every 15 seconds. The details on this are hard to find. I'm pretty sure the character with the set has to be on field and probably has to get the final blow, though it's hard to tell with underleveled artifacts. Gambler, in theory, could work amazingly on characters who rely on their skill. If they have the capability to deal decent damage, they can get another skill for free, which can be huge depending on who it's on. Some characters that come to mind are Fischl, Animo Traveler, Yonfei, Dendro Traveler, Lynette, Hydro Traveler, Aloy, Electro Traveler, Kali, and probably some unreleased versions of Traveler. These characters all have the capabilities to make Gambler fantastic, since if played right, it essentially becomes another charge on their extremely powerful skills. Or, if you want to be really funny about it, you can run on a character who already has multiple charges and a sacrificial weapon. Sucrose comes to mind. Get our damage output high enough, you've got no less than four skills at your disposal. I really, really wish Gambler was able to get up to five star stats. Like Traveling Doctor, seeing what this thing could be capable of on an equal playing field would be amazing. But some artifacts manage to excel on an uneven field, even when in direct competition with 5 stars, as is the case with the Exile. Exile functions as the lesser version of the almighty Noblesse Oblige. She has a 20% ER, and the idea of buffing the party when unleashing a burst. But while Noblesse Oblige grants a party-wide 20% boost to attack, Exile will instead gradually restore 6 energy to every party member. It's a pretty alright effect. Free ER from using a burst makes the wearer's ER contribute to every party member's burst, in a roundabout sort of way. Anyways, while the effect is clearly overshadowed by Noblesse Oblige, there's one weird interaction that makes Exile legitimately a pretty good pick. So, the main drawback of Noblesse Oblige is that it cannot stack. Only one party member is capable of providing its buffs at a time. This is a fair balance for how strong the effect is, but what if you have two characters that want in the same party? I build a lot of support characters, so what's the problem that comes up? Well, that's where the Exile comes in. Not only does it allow the potential Obliger to still provide some valuable support to the DPS characters, but the effect actually helps the wearer of Noblesse Oblige gain their burst faster. I really, really like the give and take system these two sets have. Exile is a strange set that is vastly overshadowed in most team comps, but when played just right, it can be a great support to the support. It's a bizarre one, but really manages to stand out by having a unique role in the game. Finally, we come to the top of the pack. The best of the worst, the Instructor. Like Exile, the Instructor is a support set, and with a really unique concept. In addition to a solid 80 elemental mastery within 2 piece, Whenever the wielder triggers an elemental reaction, it will boost all party members EM by 120 for the next 8 seconds. So it sort of works like a reverse Gilded Dreams. Instructor manages to be on the top of this list because of its versatility. Basically, any sub DPS can find some solid use from the thing. I mean, considering how easy it is to activate, it's basically just 80 extra EM for the whole party. I can think of a few standout cases for it. Firstly, in Dendro teams, where one person's already running deep wood memories. Dendro teams really like stacking EM, so throwing this on a support Dendro character could end up being a nice boon. Secondly, Sucrose. Sucrose is a character who's already built from reactions, namely Swirl, and who already provides party-wide EM bonuses. Plus, that bonus skills off her EM, so she'd make good use of the two-piece as well. Come to think of it, Sucrose is a great wielder of a lot of these sets. I don't know why, but it's pretty interesting. Aside from those examples though, Instructor's not a terrible option. It's definitely not anyone's best in slot, but if you want to try messing around with any of these weird neglected artifact sets, it's undoubtedly your best option. The 3 and 4 star artifacts are an interesting case. They have some really neat ideas, but feel very limiting to use. While a generally pretty good selection of 3 star weapons just suffer from harsh competition and lower base attack, the lower rarity artifacts just don't have much real reason to be used. Having substantially lower stats than the 5 stars on the things that make up a bulk of your stats is just crippling, and very few of the effects make up for that. But with that said, while they may not be the most valuable, that doesn't mean they're not fun, because a lot of these things are a blast to use. The amount of weird and gimmicky builds you make with things like Traveling Doctor and Gambler is limitless. More than anything, I really want to see more of these. I didn't address this in the 3 star weapon video, but also applies to those, even more so actually. The low rarity equipment has stayed the same since the launch of the game. 
There have been no new additions at all over three years, and it's really noticeable when looking at the artifacts. I mean, they didn't even bother adding a Dendro headband. What the hell? Amidst all the flashy new 5-star weapons they release every month and brand spanking new artifacts with college essays for effects, I want to see them return to mediocrity in a way. I want to see new low rate equipment. It doesn't have to be great, it doesn't have to be flashy, but just something to spice up the pool that has been touched in forever be a welcome change. Plus, a lot of these are just fun. Throw all the weird ideas on them, the really experimental or just insane ones that probably don't work at all. Or if you aren't going to add anything new to the outdated pool, at least let us upgrade some of the 4 star artifacts to 5 stars. Considering what exists in the game now, I doubt they'd be that crazy, but I really want to see what the mediocre 4 star artifact bunch is capable of at their fullest potential. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Deuces.